Um, welcome, everyone. Um, today's presentation is going to be um, in reference to Autodesk Vehicle Tracking, a comprehensive transportation analysis and design solution. Um, one of the things we want to take a look at, specifically with, it, with the Autodesk Vehicle Tracking software, we want to get a grasp of its transportation analysis and desi design solutions for vehicle sweat path analysis. Also, vehicle tracking, it's an essential addition to the current Autodesk civil infrastructure software po portfolio, specifically providing benefits to civil engineering teams working with uh, transportation and site design projects. Some of the key benefits that we'll take a look at would be accurately predicting the movements of steered vehicles, including cars, trucks, service vehicles, and also airplanes throughout the design process. Um, also optimizing road and campus geometrics by helping users quickly evaluate design alternatives. And then also performing real-time analysis to quickly generate information so we can receive feedback for the necessary design decisions, which also include uh, monitoring um, adherence to design standards. One of the things we want to also take a look at is Autodesk's ability to integrate planning and design. So being able to predict, evaluate the movements of steer vehicles, um, even light rail, I mentioned aircraft, and also design of parking lots. Also, interactions using analysis and simulation tools that are integrated within the Autodesk software solutions. So what, depending on what version you have, whether it's 13, 14, 15, 16, or 17, Autodesk AutoCAD, Civil 3D, Autodesk Architecture, Plan 3D, and also Map 3D, and also Utility Design also allows you to use the benefits of this powerful solution. Most infrastructure projects require some kind of analysis to determine um, if proposed roadway geometry can support movement of various vehicle types. I'm using vehicle tracking. I can quickly determine the extensive library that comes with vehicle tracking, numbering over 500 vehicles across the globe. The software even includes um, vehicle diagrams. Remember the old templates that we used to use. We also are provided immediate feedback for horizontal space requirements to maneuver vehicles, um, intelligent grips that allow us to easily edit or refine our vehicle path, and then right out of the box, design standards, for instance, um, AASHTO, um, Caltrans, Main Roads, um, FTA, and also Departments of Transportation. And if you make adjustments to that vehicle, you, can phys you can't physically accommodate the area, you can get immediate feedback from that. Also using vehicle tracking, I'm able to quickly, easily, and determine um, design, whether it can accommodate vehicle movements as well as confirm if movement complies with rule-based constraints. So I can take an analysis a step further by performing design checks that enables me to further access pathways for vehicles, evaluating whether they can follow a number of rules based upon those constraints. If I want, I can either go further into detail by regarding steering and easily create a graph within that model. So once created, the vehicle tracking displays the steering limits as well as the steering angle throughout the sweat path analysis. So we'll take a look at that also. Many times we get a 2D representation and it's hard for us to kind of take a look at that. You can easily present your analysis in a more lifelike fashion, 
quickly creating animation. Once that's created, simple buttons allow me to experience vehicles in 3D. Visualization tools from Autodesk Vehicle Tracking provide a means for analysis and to present maneuvers from any vantage point. So whether it's side mirrors, a focal point, driving the vehicle, whether it's 2D, whether it's 3D visualization, vehicle tracking gives me those tools that's necessary to create both quickly giving me the flexibility and the leverage that best meets individual projects. And last but not least, being able to optimize road and campus geometrics. Parking lots, even roundabouts. So, striping a parking lot, we want to maximize our number of parking spaces. In the back of our minds, we're still trying to maintain something that's operationally functional. You know, vehicle tracking about picks and clicks. Vehicle tracking contains features that allow you to optimize layout and maintain those geometric standards. Handicap spaces, editing options that we can make throughout the layout. Dynamic nature of these objects also adhere to design standards. Additionally, we can define our own standards and check those against standards that ship with the product. Vehicle tracking has powerful features in terms of simply preliminary layout for roundabout geometrics. Rapid editing ability for single um, geometric constraints. And then also, once we establish that, we can easily consume that tedious process by further refining based upon roundabout geometrics that can be made. Also, vehicle tracking has the ability to interact with native civil 3D objects, including surfaces, alignments. In other words, the time is not wasted just performing picks and clicks or performing conversions every time you want to run an analysis. Instead, you can focus on the design where your time is better spent. As an example, unique integration with civil 3D means roadway surface. Objects can perform ground conflicts. Driving on a civil 3D surface, you could drive onto a site in civil 3D as well as the design surface of the roadway. And then also, 3D objects, as they're required to automatically construct a civil 3D corridor. So we'll take a look at that also. So I mentioned some features about automating tools. We'll take a look at that. And with roundabout design, vehicle tracking also provides crucial analysis outputs. And we'll take a look at that. And then we always want to consider safety factors such as sight lines and standard design speeds that interactively adhere to our design process. And then also how wheels articulate from angles, whether they exceed specific limits. It also calculates speed dependent on transitions at entry points and exit points of turns. So um, again, just information in reference to vehicle tracking, tighter integration with AutoCAD and Civil 3D, editing, vehicle intelligence, snap paths, animation, also more in design content is included out of the box. So overall vehicles shipped out of the box, ability to create custom vehicles, also visually considering visibility, stopping, sight distance, and design limits. And then clients can also use design checks for standards compliance. So vehicle tracking versus some of those other products out there. And I'm not going to PowerPoint to death because I just want to get a couple of these out. So vehicle tracking is stored within a DWG file. 
you users can edit instead of deleting, drive straight on civil 3D surfaces, create civil 3D corridors, model more complex steering with axles, editing existing vehicles, custom vehicles, and then being able to drive in your own 3D vehicles blocks. Clearly, 1,800 vehicles is a lot of vehicles shipped. Um, there are some added um, worldwide design standard vehicles that you can use in terms of Europe. And then regional and design, um, regional design vehicles also. And then standard realistic um, maneuver vehicles. And then for visualization purposes, animating vehicles in sites in 3D and also 2D. And then it's not only about cars, it's planes, trains, trucks, heavy haulers, emergency vehicles, construction equipment, um, airplanes, helicopters, public cars, private cars, disabled vehicles, hospital beds. So it's not really about driving a car. So you can see whether it's plant, manufacturing, architecture, or even transportation. As an example, again, a lot of us don't understand 2D, but 3D, we kind of can visualize what's actually happening in 3D. So again, not a lot in reference to PowerPoint. So we'll just minimize that, and we'll jump right into the product. So the first thing that you will notice is that it's built on top of Civil 3D. So along the Autodesk product line, you have the ability to run vehicle tracking on Plan 3D, AutoCAD, Map 3D, Civil 3D, AutoCAD architecture. And then we have the vehicle tracking ribbon. So clearly you can see um, one of the things I want to get across is explore some of the general driving tools that you may use, whether it's driving it um, with rigid vehicles using an arc mode, or whether I'm going to perform analysis using a bearing mode. We're also going to take a look at um, driving through a civil 3D surface, creating a roundabout. So some specific, specific things that I want to kind of get through today. So um, the first thing, you know, just exploring this ideal of um, this auto drive mode where we can create a sweat path for, again, articulated vehicles or a rigid vehicle. So once I create that sweat path, I can perform simple edits to kind of make it fit. So as an example, if I just zoom in, one of the first things I would want to do is select my auto drive arc. The first thing it does is it brings up my vehicle explorer and a vehicle diagram. So I mentioned a few things during the PowerPoint. So the first thing is we have multiple vehicles in different countries. We also have worldwide vehicles and U.S. design vehicles. So we have specific states, and then we have statewide ASHTO standards. So we're going to be using several of those as we kind of go through the workflow and best practices of using Autodesk vehicle tracking. So the first thing I want to do is when I select my auto drive, I can go in and select my specific vehicle. So we're going to go in from U.S. customary on the ASHTO standards. We can see statewide. So under 2011, we have different vehicles. So whether it's a, a bus articulated or if it's a vehicle diagram with an interior. We also have cars with trailers. So specific diagrams with campers trailers, specific lengths in terms of that design cart. We also have trucks. So what I want to do is I want to specifically drive a bus. So we'll select my bus 
<clears throat> excuse me, that has an overall length of 40 feet, an overall width of 8 feet, my body height on that truck is 10 and a half feet, and my lock, the lock time is 5 seconds in terms of my steering. And even if I wanted to go way, way back, I could show my turn template. So you remember the templates we used to set up, print out a template on a Velcro clear sheet of plastic and put it on our set of plans? We also have that ability. So a lot of flexibility in terms of what we can utilize in terms of vehicle tracking. So we want to select our S40 bus, um, 84 pass, overall length of 40 feet. I'm going to select proceed. It prompts me if I frequently want to use this vehicle, I can select yes to set it up as a default. I'm going to select no, and it brings me to this point. So one of the things we want to take a look at, um, specifically in our drawing settings, these are already kind of set up where it's on specific paths and surfaces. So our scale, you can see, in terms of our scale is one to one. We have the ability to drive on surfaces existing or finished, ability to project it onto the plan as our final surfaces, and then specific layers. So I'm just going to go ahead and select OK. And it puts a little vehicle on my cursor. So I'm just going to pick right in the center of that lane, and then it allows me to kind of steer. So if I hit escape, I'm right out of it. So it's just, again, in CAD. So I'm going to go back to my auto drive. And I can do it based upon bearing or just manually picks and clicks. So I'll pick auto drive again. And I'll come right back. And here's my S40 bus. And I'll go ahead and select proceed. And I'll zoom in. And I'll pick right in the center there. And then I'll pick my first point, And then it prompts me for my vehicle position. So it asks me if I want to proceed. So I'll select proceed. And then it gives me the ability to turn based upon those parameters. So if I move it to the left, it only goes a specific distance. If I move it to the right, if I move it back, I can Go backwards. Okay, so <coughs> it specifies my auto drive up here. I can use alignments. I can use clearance offsets. I can turn on specific spots. I just want to manually come in. And I'm just using an AutoCAD pan. Now, if I came over right in here and zoomed out a little bit, came over. And now I need to come in and start with my turn. So as I use my picks and clicks to kind of maneuver through my site, and again, being cognizant of the fact that we do have curve and gutter out there, and then up to my stop point, and then maneuver through my roundabout. So if I came out just a little bit more, and you can see, so if I, right now, if I zoom in, you can see I'm coming onto that island. So if I pick one time, I can move back or forward. So I'm just going to zoom right in there so I can make that turn and pick and hit enter. So again, swept path allowing me to guide my way from an articulate vehicle or a rigid vehicle. So once I finish, now I have pluses. So if I pick on it, I can move that vehicle around in reference to my pluses and my minuses and my arrows in terms of what that vehicle is doing. And if I pick on the arrow, I can adjust my target point. OK? So clearly, there's going to be an issue over those pavers. So those are the key things that we want to be able to quickly be able to get information back from. So 
being able to quickly maneuver through a site, I'm pretty straightforward with Autodesk vehicle tracking. So one of the things we want to be able to do is, you know, how does that affect us when we're driving through that site? What is the perspective that we want to be able to get? So up on the top of my ribbon, I'm going to select Animate. It brings up my vehicle tracking animation. And then when I select the play button, it starts moving my vehicle. If I pick my animate in 3D, it kind of turns my sight. And then I can fly by with my flyby camera to kind of articulate where I'm at in terms of perspective. So I can zoom in and out in terms of animation, in terms of this specific vehicle. So you have the flexibility in terms of creating a video and seeing that vehicle drive through the site. So we'll just zoom and look a little bit and we'll change that perspective there. And you can see we have a few buttons where I can speed up the process. I can have it run through a loop. I can start it right back over again. I can also create a video that I want to send to individuals. And clearly, if I had two or three vehicles, I could simulate those going also. So pretty straightforward. So whether it's a truck or a car, you know, I could clearly do those things in reference to Autodesk vehicle tracking. So pretty straightforward. Nothing too advanced. Um, it's going to prompt me if I want to save this viewpoint, and I don't want to save this viewpoint. So it just takes me out, which is no big deal. That's what. And then you know, again, swept path analysis. We have the ability to do several things, you know. And then um, clearly, being able to modify and edit. So if I pick on it, the ability to modify my pick points how I want to maneuver through the site. So some really nice functionality in terms of grip editing that you can utilize with Autodesk vehicle tracking. Also, I want to jump to another drawing here. So just a little bit tighter in terms of how we want to be able to access and drive through a site. So I'll just go right back up, and if I pick my auto drive again, I can just pick right on it. It's going to default to that same vehicle in reference to what I was driving. So one of the things I want to be able to do is explore this ideal of auto drive with a bearing mode that allows me to create a swept path that specifically analyzes the ability of that vehicle to re reverse in loading base. So I'll go ahead and select proceed and then I'll go ahead and select OK. So the first thing that I want to do is I, I'm just going to simulate driving down and then it brings up my position for my vehicle. It tells me what specific bus that I'm using. And again, whether it's AASHTO standards, you could select specific ones in reference to articulating through. So if I pick this point here, you can see my vehicle coming through. We'll just zoom in. And then from that point, I can come up. So Again, sometimes my vehicle may not be able to drive through a specific site. So then I can start using 
parameters here in reference to my clearance. So you can see in reference to my minimum radius, my offset, and then if I wanted to also turn on a bearing. So I'll come up about here. And I'm going to zoom in. So now I can select to turn on a spot or pick an alignment. So if I pick this alignment, I can pick that line. So now I can articulate what specific bay that I want to go in. So if I look at that path, and let me come right back out here. And I'll pan and I'll drive right up to that bay. And I'll pick. And I'll hit enter. So again, being able to articulate where I want this vehicle to go to see if it can fit in that driving path. And I'll just come right back. And here's my bus. We'll zoom in on it. We'll give a little perspective here. And again, I can speed this up at any point in time. And we'll just see how well I can drive. I think I passed the first test. So again, we can pick a line to kind of reference to where we want to go in. So even if that was a semi-truck, I'm using a bus, but you kind of get the idea of how we can use an articulated vehicle to get through there. Specifically, with a bearing, we have to watch out for the tree. And we can have a bearing that matches those loading bays. And if we really wanted to, we could change our camera position in terms of our eye path in terms of what the driver actually sees, even when reversing in mirror. So as the bus is driving down, we'll just come back. We can see based upon the path and we'll reverse that. So when that, we'll speed this up a little bit. So as a truck is, as the bus is backing up, now we have a clear idea in terms of us backing up. So a little bit, a little bit of flexibility in terms of working with alignments, using AutoCAD functionality to be able to allow us to articulate that vehicle through that bay. So pretty straightforward. We also have the ability to work with aircrafts. Now this is a little bit different, you know, in terms of what we want to be able to do, you know, but same ideal. You know, if I came up to my actual vehicle library, you can see that we have multiple vehicles. So we also have aircraft. So within our aircraft, we want to select commercial. So we got helicopters in here. We got commercial. Oh, we got some Boeing aircraft in here. So let's look for a 737. Everyone's flown on that. Um, a 737. There we go. 737-300. That's not bad. You know, we can select specific items in reference to so we'll select okay so when I select my auto drive I'll just come right back and there's my default when I go ahead and select proceed it's gonna ask me if I want to leave that as a default I'm gonna select no and then it walks me through the same process and I'll select okay and then you can see basically where we can go in and manually subscribe to it and we got specific paths that we can utilize. So down here, 
we can see we can follow a line. So if I pick follow a line, we're going to select proceed. And then I'll select OK. And then if I pick this line and select OK, now that path is basically that line. So if it was a polyline, and I can pick on it and, and move it up and down. So a lot of flexibility in reference to me working with vehicle tracking. So if I go in animate, so something really quick, again, I have my path already out. I can go ahead and add. I'm going to do a little bit faster because you guys have seen these tools in terms of flyby. So just a little bit faster. So right along that path. So, <clears throat> so the beauty of that also, if I come back, instead of I zoomed out, you can see if I pick on specific grips, I can articulate through the actual path. And clearly we want to see wingspan and things like that. Also in this, the settings, when I go to settings, you know, basically I can go in and give it parameters. Also, on the settings pull down, I can import or export vehicle data. So if I go into my drawing settings, it's showing me specifically units, scale, surface style, and then also paths. Because I want to come in and tell it specifically, I want to create specifically paths in terms of my width and distance away from that articulated line. I want to be able to show my construction lines. Clearly, I want to be able to animate on specific layers. We also made reference to speed. We have design speeds going forward and backwards based upon those parameters. Whether it's spirals, lock the lock for your wheel angles. Also dynamics in terms of turning effects, friction, super elevations. So a lot of parameters in reference to the paths and drawing settings. But again, runs right on top of AutoCAD in reference to vehicle tracking. I'll go ahead and select OK. So pretty straightforward. We also have the ability to do guided paths. So one of the things we want is not only do we have a guided path, we have vertical clearance, we have manual drives. So if I select guided path, it brings up this dialog box again. So 3D presentation vehicles, trucks, vans, cars, buses, coaches. I want to go in to specifically select trams and rail vehicles. So we'll come in to Dallas. So we got streetcars here. So when I select the Dallas streetcar, it gives me a streetcar. And I'll select proceed. And then I'm not going to make that my default vehicle. And then I need an object to follow. So I'm just going to pick this red line here, and it says that's going forward. I'm going to select OK. There's a speed associated with that, and I don't have to go all the way around. I can make some adjustments here in reference to that curve, but again, the ideal is we want to be able to do design checks and see how that vehicle goes through our site. So even light rail, we'll change the perspective here a little bit.
So again, modifying, that's really quick edits that we have the ability to do. <coughs> Excuse me. So but again, verifying vehicle paths, how they can um, go specifically through a site. I'm just going to speed that up. So even light rail. So I'm going to stop that there. And we can even see specifically analyze our path. So we also have our profile for our vehicles. So specifically, I'm going to set in my profile for my train. So if I pick on that. It puts the profile of my train here. So it's a streetcar. Gives me my overall width, lift, width, and body height. And also minimum ground clearance. So we do have some parameters in reference to ground flare, clearance and conflicts. So when I pick on that. It's basically asking for my path, and based upon that path, it's prompting me for my existing or finished ground surface. So you have the ability to assign surfaces for ground clearances. Um, clearly, in Civil 3D, this doesn't have any surfaces, but you can assign surfaces. And we'll take a look at that also. One of the things I wanted to be able to do is kind of give some insight to this idea of this vertical clearance and ground clearance. So you can see here, I just have a regular line. It has a regular line that has some no elevations to it but one of the things we want to be able to do is we want to drive a car and see how that's affected by that bump in the road so I'm just going to go ahead and select vertical clearance and then I want to drive an actual car so and again there's different cars here so maybe I want to go over to uh, maybe I want to go to British design vehicles and I'll go into design vehicles and maybe I'll do a private car and then my private car I'm just going to select proceed it's giving me my overall parameters and meters so I'll go ahead and select OK and then it says do you want to make that your default vehicle I do not and then it prompts me for my drawing settings I'm gonna select OK and then it says vertical clearance analysis select object so I'll just pick it so it prompts me in my units, both default height and ground clearance is set. Um, any of the followings may use for default values. We recommend that you review those values. And then a warning again, and I'll just select yes. And then it just looks like nothing was done. And then if I zoom way down here, you can see there's that little private car. And if I pick on it, I can move my car throughout the path. So one of the things we want to be able to do is you can perform, perform that with small vehicles or large vehicles. You know, clearly a large vehicle might be different, but again, my sweat path and my vehicle vehicle clearance allows me to kind of move throughout. So one of the things we want to be able to do is kind of take a look at that. So we're going to drive through.
And let me that. I want to see what's going to happen here. So we'll go ahead and animate. And then we'll speed this up. And we'll push play. So one of the things you can't do with the um, vertical clearance is go in 3D. So you will see the bottom of this car is going to have an issue. And clearly, if you're in a truck, that's a different issue. So we'll go back. Clearly, if you're in a car, your front bottom of your bumper is going to hit that road. But if you're in a higher truck, clearly that's going to be different. So again, it goes back to these design standards and parameters that we want to be able to use in reference to these vehicles. So again, um, vehicle library. We also have um, ground conflicts report. And we can see that bumper would hit that actual vehicle. We also have the ability to create our own vehicles. So just some really quick stuff in terms of vehicle um, tracking. Um, we can do guided paths, vertical clearance, manual, and then we've seen auto drive. We can do swept paths where we can select specific lines to follow. And then we also, because I talked about other products outside of Autodesk vehicle tracking. And what I want to be able to do, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to address questions um, at the end. So we'll address some questions. Um, what I also wanted to be able to do is kind of show, um, per se, now we have to think about Autodesk vehicle tracking and auto turn that's been around for years. AutoTurn has multiple modules, vehicle tracking, everything comes with one. So now let's talk about parking. So if I came back to my drawing here, and let's open up a quick drawing here. Uh, yeah, we'll, we'll do read only. So one of the things I quickly want to be able to do, and we talked about maneuvering through lots and things like that. Um, we also have a parking lot this year. So one of the things I quickly want to do is I want to create a new row. And just like vehicle standards library, we also have parking standards library. So we're just going to go into a quick parking standard and I'll go ahead and select OK and it's giving me scale angles to check against and I'll select OK and then it brings up this properties box so I can do base signal angle parking parallel parking single double so I'm gonna go in and select my start point. So I'm just going to cut my old snaps on and just pick this point. Just some quick, it's just something really quick and simple. Nothing extreme. And we'll pick right there. Hit enter and then we'll pick there. And that gives me parking. So I'm going to cut my old snaps off. So we have the ability, again, auto turn a little bit different vehicle tracking parameters that assist you within AutoCAD. 
So something as simple as that. How many parking spaces can I just pop in there? I clearly don't want to do offset. So there are 78 parking spaces. So not only do we have the ability to create really quick parking lot layouts, um, we also have the ability to create parallel rows. So now I'm going to come right back in. I'm going to select Proceed, select OK. And once I pick on it, it knows that it's an Autodesk vehicle, so it knows that there's parameters in reference to my lane and aisle widths. So as I move my cursor, it won't allow me to go beyond my aisle widths. So I'll just pick right in there, hit Enter. And I have plenty of flexibility because we talked about the grip editing, the ability to manipulate and edit on the fly in reference to my lanes. So intelligent objects, remember Civil 3D, intelligent objects as we kind of work within our site. Okay. And if I wanted to come in, something as simple as, you know, maybe I wanted to do something as simple as like do a polyline off this road here. So I'm just going to do something simple and I'm going to come in and say, you know, I want to edit, I want to enter in an access road from this polyline. So I'll just pick it. I'll tell it my custom standard width is 18. I'm going to make this 24. Select OK. It's that simple. Intelligent objects in terms of working with Civil 3D in AutoCAD. OK, and then we go right back. Maybe we want to edit a parking stall, edit a row, edit an island, edit a bay. So I'm just going to edit this row, make it simple. It highlights. I'll go ahead and select my row, and we'll make this a little bit smaller. Okay. So I'll pick this bay to edit, and then I'll just tell it, I need these to be disabled. And then I'll say I want to copy to here, 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 and close. And then I'll select my parking standards. So now I got my percentage for my disabled. I got my percentage for my building in terms of parking base. So really quick data to be able to manipulate with Autodesk Vehicle Tracking. And, and last but not least, this whole idea of working with a roundabout. And clearly, Civil 3D has some geolocation um, functionality in terms of a coordinate system. So I want to come in and select Vehicle tracking, and I'm just going to select add a roundabout. I'm going to make it simple. We have scale, we have surfaces, we have corridor, we have road markings. I'm just going to select OK, and I can put in parameters in reference to my appearance, the surface that I'm using. I'm going to select OK. And then I'm just going to zoom in, and I'm just going to place it right there. And then the first thing it says is define my access line. So if I pick on it. That's my first one. So you have to think about what's actually going on in reference to the approach road, the departing, and the lanes. So if you think about what it takes to create a cul-de-sac in Civil 3D, imagine doing that, something simple. And then I'll pick my second access road, and I'm just going to do something pretty straightforward. Pick my third access road, and then my fourth one. I can have as many as I want. And then I'll right click. And it creates a little roundabout for me. The beauty of working with this is now it's flexible in terms of, and not only do you see my curve radius is updating, but you also see my signage updating. And also my radius is in speed. So we have the functionality. Um, design checks, crosswalks, 
um, my roundabout properties, I can add splitter lanes, I can add a crosswalk. So let's just say I want to add a crosswalk. And I'm not going to get really into detailed here, but you can see my signage knows it's an intelligent object where my crosswalk should be. And even in transition, you can see my crosswalk widening. We'll just put it right there. So that moves my signage. So a lot of flexibility in terms of working with Autodesk vehicle tracking. And, and clearly, I just kind of threw in some numbers there. Uh, but if I wanted to, I can come in, add crosswalks, splitter lanes, um, edit my rumble strips, my speed striping. You can do all those things. And again, if I just pick on my roundabout, it gives me all the specifications in terms of what I need to add in here. So pretty straightforward. Um, a lot of information. Um, trying to be cognizant of your time in reference to what I wanted to go through. But um, clearly you can see, again, with Autodesk Vehicle Tracking, you get a lot in reference to, you know, features and tools that allow you to perform sweat path analysis, parking lot layout, um, driving rigid vehicles, articulated vehicles, analyzing um, within confined spaces, forward or reverse, movements for aircrafts, vehicles, and then vertical analysis. So you do have some specific things that you want to be able to do. And even if I came in and used this vehicle, because we talked about intelligence, you can see when I move my vehicle to the different lanes, it knows. And then if I pick one time, just to kind of show you the idea of this sweat path analysis, how I can articulate right through that roundabout with just two picks and a click. So something pretty straightforward. Okay, so again, I do want to be cognizant of everyone's time in reference to our webcast. So what I want to be able to do now is I think we will open up the lines so we can have some questions. And we have received one question. Okay. Uh, the question is, can you create custom multiple pivot point uh, trailers and, and vehicles? Yes. One of the things you want to be able to do is um, you can create your own template in terms of your vehicle. So. Even if you created an AutoCAD block from it first, you could do that also. So if I came into Next, then you can kind of come in and start with one of these vehicles. And as you started with one of them, you could kind of manipulate. It's not going to allow me to change any of these because these are straight out of the box. But once you make a copy, you can come in and add as many as you want in reference to that vehicle. So you have a template wizard that you can use to create. 